Welcome back, queens. Now, as I awoke this morning from my 27-day bender, sprawled naked across the queen sign, reeking of sarsaparilla and regret, I was startled by a copy of the Globe and Mail smacking my face. To my jubilation, Queens was once again front and center in a national-ish Toronto-centric newspaper. <laughs> to my horror, though, I discovered a startling secret. The Globe and Mail doesn't like us. <laughs> For some reason, and I'm guessing it may have been a slow news day, once again the topic of Aberdeen 05 was brought up. Not since Jennifer Aniston has somebody been so constantly and publicly reminded of a painful experience in the past. <laughs> but as fair and tasteful as this article was to portraying Queen's students, we at QTV feel they may have erred in a few ways. So we're going to play a little game we like to call Fact Check. First off, we at QTV conducted an informal poll of our own, surveying a portion of our staff to find out how many of them drive luxury vehicles. Out of the six surveyed, none of them actually did. How scientific are these findings actually? Not at all. <laughs> Yet they are still more accurate than classifying an entire student population based on the angry ramblings of a landlord looking down the street at parked cars. <laughs> By the way, how did the Globe and Mail manage to get in touch with this landlord? My in-home waterfall has been broken for months and I cannot get in touch with anyone to fix it. So please, Globe and Mail, if you can forward them my contact information, it would be very much appreciated. <laughs> now, I am the first to admit that Queens is not perfect. I set a standard for the student population that is impossible to emulate. <laughs> but we at Queens have gotten an unnecessarily bad rep the last few years. Queens students have been accused of a shopping list worth of crimes against humanity, from making Nickelback popular to birthing Godzilla, to causing the fourth pillar to fail at the Olympics. <laughs> but to attack current Queen's students for an event that transpired before most of them even arrived at Queen's seems a little irresponsible. That would be like saying the to the National Post, another fan of Queen's by the way, is full of crooks just because its former owner went to jail for fraud. <laughs> or like saying that the Globe and Mail always makes poor editorial choices just because the Parliament of Canada requested an apology from it for a ar controversial article it published in 2006. <laughs> so Globe and Mail, I am officially putting you on the list. For your article on the depiction of Queens, you've officially been bailed!